I want to continue in our teaching of, of destroying the works of the devil. Destroying the works of the devil. That's what the word of God says. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 13, verse 8. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 8. Destroying the works of the devil. Amen. There's an explosion taking place. Like a bomb, amen, falling worse than the bomb that hit, amen, Hiroshima and Nagasaki, amen, the atomic bomb, boom, amen. I would, it is worse than a gun going off in Laventil, pow, amen, worse than a gun going off in Digo Martin, pow, worse than a gun going off in Chagones, amen, pow. Amen. This, this, this destruction that we are talking about is Jesus uh, mashing up Satan on your behalf. Come on and give God thanks that Jesus is mashing up Satan on your behalf. That's so good. Your greatest enemy is not who you see. Your greatest enemy is who you don't see. Amen. Who you don't see. That's your... Your greatest enemy. And the, and, the, and the word of God tells us he goes about like a thief. He goes about like a thief. He goes about seeking them whom he may devour. Amen. I love the word underlining word here. May. May. Amen. He may devour. Let's take a look at the text. Amen. First Peter chapter, chapter 5 and verse 7. He goes about... Like a roaring lion, verse 8, amen. He goes about like a roaring lion, seeking them whom he may devour. Whom he may devour. And I love verse 7. Verse 7 says, amen, cast in all your cares. Cast in all your cares up on him. That's Jesus Christ they're talking about here. Cast in all your cares up on Jesus because he cares for you. I want you to know that Jesus is not a historic figure. Jesus is not someone who is transcendent somewhere uh, way up in the heaven. Jesus is closer than the breath you breathe. Amen. Jesus is closer than the breath you breathe. So you can cast in your cares. Amen. I don't know about you, but my cares, amen. I, I need a, a 10-wheeler truck to give to Jesus. My cares are so much, amen, that I need Jesus every day to take care of my... My, my care. Some of you probably don't have much cares, so you just had to get a wheelbarrow. <laughs> Amen. Well, I need a 10-wheeler truck to, think, to bring my cares to Jesus. Amen. My needs are so much. Amen. So, but I want, amen, to take all of them and bring it to Jesus. Why? Because the devil is going about like a roaring lion seeking them whom he may, get, get to that verse, son, whom he may devour, whom he may devour. So I want to be in those persons who Jesus is taking care of my cares so that when the devil comes, he will not, I would not be one of those who he can devour. I would be one of those whom he may not devour. How about you, you two? You want to be one of those whom he may not devour. You want to be one of them. Amen. I love, I love Psalm 101. I'm going to read the whole psalm. It's a short psalm. Psalm 101. The psalmist says, uh, let's read in concert. Amen. So I, 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 I want all of us to read together. Amen. It's going to sound like a, amen, a real nice thing if all of us, although we have different translations. But let's see how best we can put up with it. Amen. Are you ready? Psalm 101. I will sing of the mercies and judgment. Unto thee, O Lord, I will sing. I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. O when will thou come unto me? I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. A forward heart shall not shall depart from me. I will not know the wicked person. 
whoso privily slandereth his neighbor, him will I cut off. Him that hath an high look and a proud heart will not I suffer. Mine eyes shall be up on the faithful of the land, that they may dwell with me. He that walketh in a perfect way, he shall serve me. He that walketh deceit shall not dwell with my house. He that telleth lies shall not tarry in my sight. I will destroy all the wicked of the land that I may cut off all wicked doers from the city of the Lord. Now let's read verse 8 again. I will early destroy all the wicked of the land that I may cut off all the wicked doers from the city of the Lord. Now, I love that last verse. I will early. I ain't giving them time to get going. I will early destroy all the wicked of the land. I touched somebody next to you and said, that's what I'm going to do. Amen. I'm going to destroy all the wicked of the land early. Now, before you do the wrong thing and you misunderstand what I'm saying, let me read another portion of scripture for you. It's taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. Now, so I want you to understand the context that we are talking in when we say we will destroy early the wicked that dwell in the land. Your enemy is not who you see. The person who you see just happens to be an infidel, someone whom the devil is using to mess up your life or to stand in the way of your progress. God wants you early to deal with that principality and that power that is working behind the scenes to use these infidels that work with him against you. So as a child of God or someone who now is coming into faith, you have to know before sinners begin to walk the earth that you have to arise in the morning and deal with the spiritual stuff that Satan has at work on the outside there to mess up your day and to mess up your week and by extension mess up your months and years that are ahead of you. You have to arise with spiritual authority in order for you to deal with it. The Bible tells us who we wrestle against. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12 tells us who we wrestle against. We wrestle against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness, of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. The devil is very organized, extremely organized. I repeat myself, he's extremely organized. Jesus tells us in the book of Luke's Gospel, chapter 13 and verse 12, that he is not one who wants to see us 
bound. He does not want to see us bound. He wants to see us loosed. God wants you to have your best life now. Put a big smile on your face, amen. And, 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 and amen, and tell yourself, I'm going to have my best life now. Uh, let me just inform you if you don't know. Amen. You are not, amen, the, the, the rabbit that is chased by the fox in the cartoon. Amen. And when the fox is tricked by the rabbit, he falls over the precipice and then he makes a hole in the, world, in the ground and he comes back up. Amen. The road run I'm talking about, you know. You're not that kind of creature. You don't bounce back after dying from in this life. Amen. When you come through here once, according to the word of God, according to Luke Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 27. In Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 27, the word of God tells us once for us to die. It is appointed as unto us once for us to die. And after death becomes the judgment. By the way, if you, should, if you should know, amen, you better know it now that you do not have an appointment with death, but death has an appointment with you. Amen. Death has an appointment with you. You may not have an appointment with death, but death has an appointment with you once. It's just once. So it means every day that you live, it should be your best day. It should be your best day. Amen. You got to make every day your best day because, amen, this is the best day of the rest of your life because it's the day that you have. Yesterday is gone. Tomorrow is only promise. What you have is now. Just touch somebody next to you and say, don't mess with me in the name of Jesus. Don't mess with me. Amen. Because, amen, I'm going to have a ball. I'm, amen. I'm here to have a ball. Amen. Amen. I'm going to have a ball. Amen. I was just coming out of Diggle Martin Church just now there. Amen. And, and, and they were now walking in with some hot, amen, bakes with salt fish. Amen. Hot bake with salt fish. Man, I know that ain't good for me, but I still took one and put it in the car. All that grease from that fried bake. Amen. Just put it in the car. Amen. Let it tempt me for a little while. After church, let me see if I can sustain that. Amen. Amen. But, I, amen. but you know, you want to you wanna have your best life now. God wants you to have your best life now. It is important that you have your best now. But you see, why do you, amen, want to live your best life now? There is a devil at every level who wants to stop you. Who wants to stand in the way of you from, from you having to live a life of victory. That's why you need empowerment. You need empowerment. Paul tells us in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10 that we should be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. That's where your strength comes from. Your, your strength doesn't come from the GMC products. In fact, some of us don't have the energy, amen, to burn out those GMC products. And so it sits on top of us and eventually kill us because some friend tell us that we should have it. Amen. We, we just went by somebody's recommendation and didn't know that, it was, that, amen, if you're not exercising to burn off that stuff, amen, you, amen, you're not going to get the muscle you're going to get, amen, amen, that kind of protein that will kill you, amen, amen. So being ill-informed is a very dangerous thing even though something may be good for you to help you. Amen. It may just not be for you. There are things that, amen, that are good for somebody else, but it's not good for you. You got to know what is good for you. And one of the things that is sure good for you is that if you're going to live victorious in this life, you have to be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might. Why? Because, you see, you, you are wrestling, you're engaged in some serious, serious conflicts. You're engaged in some serious, I repeat myself, serious conflict. The word of God tells us that the devil, 
he does not want to leave you. And he doesn't care about who you are. He doesn't care about you. Amen. He doesn't care how, how rich you are, how poor you are. He doesn't care if you have a gun. He doesn't care if you don't have a gun. Amen. He doesn't care if you're black or you're white. He doesn't care about your ethnicity. He, amen. He, he, his motive is to make sure that he affects your everyday and your destiny. And sometimes it looks like he's working for you. He make, amen. He actually sets you up. He is, he is so organized, amen, that he sets you up. And, you, 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 it, and many a times we get deceived because we think that this thing is, oh, this thing feels good. Amen. This thing feels good. And, and, but really and truly, amen, what we, what, what we feel good with, it may not be good for us. And because it's a setup by the devil, eventually it destroys us. It destroys us. So that we, we have to be wise. That's why the word of God tells us that, that be not ignorant of the devil's devices. Be not ignorant of the devil's devices. So because he, he comes with devices. He comes with his wiles. And, and we have, to, be, we have to, be, to live as wise and not as fools. There are two things that we learn in the lesson with the man who was possessed with a spirit called legion. Mark chapter 5 and verse 9. In Mark chapter 5 and verse 9, um, the word of God tells us that Jesus asked this demon that was controlling this man's life. If you read the story, you would learn that the man was controlled by a devil. He ran through the cemetery where he had made his home naked and he cut himself he was a bloody mess to look up on with stones sharp stones he would cut himself the demon made him do a lot of things that he did not really normally would have done just like you you know and, and, and many a times you are doing things that you know you shouldn't be doing but influenced by the by the power of your of, 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 of your emotions that is, that is driven by your submission towards disobedience to God and obedience to the devil. You find yourself doing things that you shouldn't be doing and it's destroying you. It is, it is making a mess of you. But, amen, somehow it is, a, it is, it is appeasing to your passion. It is a, appeasing to your emotions, but it, it is destroying you. But this man, the same way, he was a bloody mess running up and down. And Jesus met, met that, that, that man and the, the man came and submitted himself to Jesus. And Jesus asked the, the demon that was in the man, how many of you inside of this man? And he said, by the way, listen, my name is Legion. Jesus said, um, how many of you? He said, we are many. He said, we are many. And then observe, the demons that were controlling this man, they did not want to leave him. Well, what amazes me is that the demons just didn't want to not only leave him, but the demons, they wanted to leave his surroundings. The next verse, verse, verse 10, the word of God says that, that the demons began to ask Jesus, beg him, besought him, that Please don't send us away out of the country. We, we, we want to continue in this territory. We want to continue in this territory. So I want you to observe two things. One, the demons, they were, they, they were so strong in this man because there were many. And then two, they, they did not want to leave the territory. This brings us to a very interesting Amen. Observation that there are, there are a lot of, lot of people today who are controlled by spiritual forces that has a generational um, operation. They, 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 have, they have connection to your history. You have to be very careful, uh, even as a child of God, who you connect with, you, and, and not only as a child of God in general, you have to be careful who you connect with because 
Hey, Amen. You don't, you don't want to bring somebody else's demons into your, into your life. Amen. Into your relationship, into your business. Amen. That's why the word of God says, be not unequally yoked. Hey, why? Because you don't, amen, the spirit of Satan, if, 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 if it is not driven out, you're actually inviting Satan into your arrangements so that your, your life and your arrangements, amen, has diabolical influences over it. You've got to be very, very, very careful. The devil is very organized. Let's, say, let's take a look at how organized he really is. In Matthew chapter Chapter 12, hey amen, and verse 24, they began to tell Jesus when he was casting out a demon out of a dumb and, 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 and deaf man. Let's take a look, amen, at verse 22, amen. G the man was blind, he was dumb, the man was blind and dumb. You think that the devil should have given that man a break, he's already blind and dumb. You know, and that, but it, it tells us that the devil does not care how, how, how bad your situation is. He wants to finish you off. Amen. Now, you, you're wondering why you're going through all that you're going through. The devil just wants to finish you off, honey. He just wants to finish you off. That's why is you, it is so important that you continue to seek the presence of God. You know, some people like this kind of hiffy thing, you know, you know, you know, big and large and in charge. Listen to me, you ain't no big and large and in charge. Amen. Just one piece of, amen, you, amen, prostate cancer, amen, inside of your body for two years will continue to make all your big bones, amen, begin to crumble if it get into your bones, amen, amen. You just get, amen, just come down, amen, with a little touch and Naomi. Minoma cancer, amen, and the minoma cancer, amen, starts with a little dot in your system, amen, and all of a sudden all your guts begins to get eat out. Let me see how big and large you are, amen, because, amen, when medical science tells you that we can't help you at that stage, amen, I want to know how big and large you are, amen, so you, you, you gotta, you gotta, amen, live under the covering of this life, amen, appropriating, amen, the constant help of God, just touch somebody next to you and say he can be more right than that amen we need amen the continued help of God we we need the, the healing of God to be always upon us we we need it we need it because the devil will afflict you hear this poor boy amen blind and dumb amen amen but he has a devil still possessing him the devil possessing him. He, they, they, in Mark chapter 9, they, don't go there yet. There was one boy, amen, that devil had possessed him so strongly. And when Jesus cast the devil out of him, he, all, he laid on the ground as one dead. The Bible said the devil left him so violently. The devil left him so violently. Not him out, knocked him off of his feet. Amen. They picked him up as one dead and Jesus amen, spoke to him and restored him. I want you amen to always keep in mind that you got to respect the opposition. Respect the opposition. If you do not respect the opposition, you will not seek, amen, that kind of spiritual security that is needed. People are, amen, are out there living carelessly without spiritual covering on their lives. Spiritual, and amen, and one of the things that disgusts me is that some of them are so proud that they want a private appointment pastor. Can I have a private? Come into my church, man, if you want to. Amen. 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 Come into my church. Tell me you want a private or oh, amen appointment. Can I see? privately amen you don't need a private day man amen appointment when the devil is destroying your home you need to be like a drowning man and cry out help you need a cry for help amen you amen and i tell you amen there are lots of you you should be further amen further and further in all that you are doing but the devil has been working to set you back, set you back, set you back, 
set you back, set you back, set you back. Amen. But, but I, I'm here to preach deliverance to you today. I am here to preach deliverance to you. Amen. The word of God says in, in 1 John chapter 3 and verse 8, the, the, the word of God tells us, amen, for this purpose was the Son of God manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Jesus is, has been manifested to destroy. There, there is a destroyer in this house. I don't know what the devil is doing to you, but there is a destroyer. Amen. He He's a, he's a destroyer. There is a destroyer in this house. Why? Because the devil, he, he's about to bring curses upon you. Curses, curses. He's about to bring curses upon you. Hey Amen. There are some curses I'd just like to just remind you about. The sickness sickness the, the spirit of infirmity there i know that there a natural sickness don't come and tell me amen a devil attack you amen when you amen get out there after ironing the holes of the clothes amen and go and let rain wet you and tell me the devil attack you amen you attack yourself amen 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 you have more should have more sense than that amen 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 you don't come and tell me them type of things but i know there are some sicknesses have a spiritual origin amen and you amen if the moment you feel there is a sickness that come upon you and have a spiritual origin you need to attack it you need to attack it amen that's why the word of god says be strong in the lord and in the power of his might you you need to attack that devil amen i still do you got to deal with sickness amen i amen i keep praying amen that the word of God promises that God will put none of these diseases that he placed upon the Egyptians, he's going to place upon me. So if the devil is looking to bring certain things up on me, I begin to tell him no, 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 no. Amen. I, I'm claiming healing. I don't, I don't know if you ever had this kind of experience. You wake up in the morning and all of a sudden, amen, you, you, and I never had this one, but you feel a lump in your breast, amen, as a woman thing, amen, and all of a sudden the devil started to tell you, amen. You know, we got very careful these days because men might come on and tell you, that, in that hey, listen to me, amen, the Lord, the Lord, amen, I want you to know, amen, you got to tell, tell that devil, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. You feel a little lump in your breast, amen. Amen. And they will say, you have cancer there. Amen. You better stop it. And you stop, you stop claiming things on you. Amen. You better go to the doctor first and get a biopsy. Amen. Before you start putting things on yourself. Amen. Because I've discovered that the thing that you fear most comes up on you. Amen. You got to tell that devil, leave me alone in the name of Jesus Christ. And you don't tell him it politely. You, you got to tell him it violently. Amen. And to tell him violently, you got to apply the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. In the name of the blood is all over me. In the name of Jesus Jesus Christ, the, amen, the power of God is upon you, devil, get out of here, in Jesus' name. You see, but you have to deal with spirits of infirmities. You have to deal with spirit of sickness. Another thing you have to deal with is mental disorder. Deal with, me amen. I was speaking to a, psych a, 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 a nurse at church, amen, a psychiatric nurse, and she was telling me, she was saying, boy, pastor, Amen. You know, we have more outside than inside. I said, really? She said, yeah. She said, amen, there's a professional term to it. Um, schizophrenia. You know. She said, but they're mad. So you just talk to one or two people. You just talk to them. Good, good, good. Amen. And after you finish talk to them, good, and you come back and you think all our lane, one on the same lane, on the same vine. Amen. You want to know who you just talked to. Amen. Amen. He's a devil. You just, amen, just bounce up all of a sudden. Amen. And he's a, you want to know how all hell just turned loose. Amen. Amen. I'm not talking about, amen. Uh, I'm not talking about, um, 
women with amen with their periods amen 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 that's a whole different mood swing you're talking about amen i'm not talking about that amen ladies please smile amen 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 i'm not talking about that amen i'm not talking about that amen because i know women amen sometimes i amen i'm married to one for four for 37 years now so i know what i'm talking about amen i have evidence in this amen amen but you know but it, 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 it is it is important that you amen recognize that sometimes amen there are some people that you you just don't understand amen the devil just works for them amen you know there's a little thing that you can laugh at um uh, somebody had a vision that obama uh, um tasher and and putin all presidents went to 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 hell oh and 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 and, and Vladimir Putin, Amen, saw a phone while he was having a toy in hell, and he looked down and he saw the phone, and he said, "Tasha, Obama, look a red phone here. They love red phones, Amen. Dealing with emergencies, Amen. They feel they were feeling a little sophisticated in hell, so they they asked the devil, can I make a call? And the devil said, sure, go ahead and make a call. And Putin called back Russia, spoke for two hours. And well, when he was through, the devil says, one million dollars. The, 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 the devil said, what? One million dollars. Putin said, I can't believe it. It was just one hour call. You, what happened? You don't know you're in hell? You don't know you're in hell? Tasha called. She talked for two hours. Putin talked for one. Tasha, when she called two hours, the devil said, five million dollars. Tasha said, my God. This is real hell here. <laughs> Obama took up the phone and he called. He talked for four hours. When the, Obama was finished, the devil told Obama, five U.S. Five dollars U.S. So Putin got so, amen, upset and outraged. How can he pay five dollars? I paid a million. Tasha paid two million. He said, well, since Trump has take it over America. It's a local call. <laughs> Americans are catching hell now. All them foreigners and amen. And everybody wants to run out of America. Amen. It's a local call. We are connected. Amen. I tell you, it's amazing. Amen. But I want you to know, amen. Some of you, amen. You two have to pay very little, amen, for your call because what you are going through is already hell. You're going through hell. You're going through, the devil is almost like he's, he, 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 he sleeps next to you. He, he's a neighbor next to you. It seems as though all hell has broken loose on your life. And you're in the greatest trouble that you ever find yourself in. But I've got news for you. Amen. It's because demons are bringing curses up on you. And you, you need someone who can break the curse over, the, over your life. Break the, the works of the demons over your life. Amen. Then there is also another hell that people are living through. Amen. And that's sexual perversion. Sexual perversion is destroying families. Destroying. Destroying families. Amen. I don't know how some people, amen, feel that they can have all that amount of sex with different people. Amen. And, and, and have to be so engaged, caught up in, in major sexual, amen, perversion, amen, people who, who, who are so clouded with, with the darkness of sex, loss, amen, is capturing their attention all day, amen, all night. They go so far that they interfere with their children, incest, amen. They go so far that they can interfere with the, other, the opposite sex, rape, Amen. I, 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 in all my imagination, amen, I cannot even figure out how a man can enjoy rape. Amen. Or a woman, woman raping too now, you know, watch it, yes. It, amen. 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 Molestation. Amen. It, 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 illegitimacy. You know, people just illegitimate. You know, they, they just don't 
They don't care. Amen. They are living out of order. Amen. Hey, amen. Holler tree. I, 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 last week before I was in Barbados, amen, and hanging with one of my preacher friends, and I was saying to him, I said, we were lying, we went, we went down by Oyston to get some fish tonight. And I said to him, I said, Wesley, um, with all these tourists here, do you all have a, 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 a problem with holler tree? He said, Prostitution, he said. He said you ain't seen, you ain't seen nothing, boy. Boy, you if I, if I could, could, could show you something here, you cry. I said, Lord Jesus, <laughs> Amen. So, Amen. So we were through talking and all. Amen. We were going back to the hotel, and he said, Let me just drive you through here. And when a man drive me through there, Amen, through a place there, I said, Oh my God, it was pure hell. Amen. I'm talking about naked people in the street. Ah, amen. Amen. We have to give the girls down Murray Street, amen, some, some points. Amen. Amen. In, in Barbados, it's pure hell. Amen. 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 I'm talking about real naked people in the street. Amen. Just like if they're going to the beach. Amen. Amen. On a hot sunny day. Amen. And it's the late hours of the night. Oh my God, I don't need, Lord, take that out of my, my, my mind. I need a sanctified mind. Amen. Somebody just pray my deliverance right now. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I tell you, I said, Wesley, please get out of this place quickly. Amen. This is hell here. But you see, that's the kind of sick world that we are living in. Amen. Amen. And, and, and you know, we, 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 we tend to always beat up on fornication and adultery. But there are people with real messed up minds. Amen. And also, we got to be very careful. You know, this, this kind of unisex kind of thing that we are dealing with today. You got to be very careful. Amen. Please don't get tied up with this cross-dressing. Amen. You know, we got cross-dressing as a big, big thing today in our society. And, as a, and we are asked to accept it. We are asked to accept it. Accept it. Please don't get, amen, sexually dis disorientated. Amen. Just make sure and look down. When you look down, you'll be able to know who you really are. Amen. Amen. You got to get yourself together. Come on. We got to get ourselves together. Amen. I, amen. So I, I, I think some people are not looking down enough. Amen. So they're cross-dressing and, and amen, dealing with all kinds of perversion. Amen. And trouble and messed up lives. But I want you to know that's nothing but the devil. Amen. Amen. Trying to keep you in bondage. You need, you need to be loose from that kind of bondage. Amen. You need to be set free. You need to be delivered. Amen. It's not cute. It's not cute. Amen for you as a woman looking like a man. It's not cute. Amen. 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 You got too much feminine juices inside of you. Amen. To be, to be masculine. You should appreciate your gender. And same thing with the man. Appreciate your, your gender. The devil is messing up our society today. Amen. I want you to know there is another messed up situation. And that's poverty. Poverty, you know, people are just going through financial difficulties. You know, you, 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 you have a job. There are so many people with jobs. And, and, and because the, the cost of living has risen so, so badly, amen, their, their, their monies are not commensurate to, to, the, to the cost of living. Not commensurate to the cost of living. And, and you got to pray that God really deliver you out of that. Because the word of God promises that God can deliver you out of those things as well. In fact, the word of God tells us in the book of 3 John. 3 John, amen, verse 2. Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health. Amen. Even as you stood. 3 John. Amen. Epistles. Amen. Third John, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in good health. Amen. Amen. Be in good health even as your soul prospers. Third John. Amen. Verse 2. Third John. Verse 2. Amen. Even as your soul prospers, God wants you to be in good health even as your soul prospers. God wants your soul. Amen. God is not. 
God does, is, not, is not confused. God wants you to have, you have your best life now. He wants you to enjoy your life. I, I, me, this is what I love about serving God. I, I, before I got converted, I, I tried everything. Billy, trust me. Amen. I, 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 my, 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 my father, he never was a drinker. You know, he, my father, he, thank God he wasn't a drinker. He drank drink two, two drinks and, and he keep giving trouble in the house if he takes two drinks. So he never liked drinking. Amen. But, but my uncle, oh brother, my, my, my uncle, my, one of my cousins was telling me, amen, that, that if, he, if he ever stops drinking, he's going to die. That's my cousin who is not converted. You know, you, you don't expect a converted man to talk about that. Because my uncle is 84 years and he looks so good. And amen. And he drinks for so he has drank for so long. Amen. And, and he consumes alcohol like he's drinking water. He's just, just that's how so go. Amen. He's permanently, amen, high off for alcohol. I'm praying his deliverance. Please remember him in prayer. His name is Michael. Amen. Let's remember him. Anytime you're praying, say, God, remember Pastor Uncle Michael. Amen. But you see, he, he always had this attitude of wanting to invite other family members to drink. Come and take something to pour. Take something to pour. You know, you have all kinds of family members. Amen. So you got to still love him in spite of. Amen. Amen. You know, amen. You can't, amen, just hate him. You got to love him still in spite of. Amen. But I pray, amen. I always tell my son, don't go by Uncle Michael and get tempted to drink. You know, amen. Because, amen, I have a demon to cast out to you if, I, if you ever get in that situation amen you know you got to keep you warn your children amen who to go to and who not to go to in the family you know you got amen amen i pray uncle michael never hears this message amen <laughs> amen but you see the, the spirit you see the, let me tell you what happens is that it moves down in the family from one person drinking and then it moves to the next person smoking marijuana and then by the time it get to the grandkids the grandkids kids are hooked it's cocaine. See the progression? The progression of generational, generational curses. Amen. And most of you, your grandparents drank. And some of them may just be, be were social drinkers. But what about the grandchildren and the family? Some of them in cocaine. Amen. Thank God. Some of them instead of steal but, and, 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 and rob and amen and become destitute on the streets. Amen. As, as yet. But you see, that's, that's where the devil takes the, the, takes the progression of, the, of, of his works. He takes the progression of his works to destroy their lives. Amen. You watch it. You see them being, amen. They would take, amen, their, their whole families, amen, development savings and homes. Amen. One guy was selling me a house for $65,000. In my street, and my and houses on my street are over a million and a half dollars. He was selling me for sixty-five dollars. In fact, I didn't buy it, but somebody bought it. Sixty-five thousand dollars, because there is no value for life. Amen. That's how the devil destroys destroys people. Amen. Thank, and one of the things I'm thankful to God for is that that young man eventually he was rehabilitated. But when he was rehabilitated, he had to be rented. Lost his, his family inheritance there. you got to be very, very careful. Amen. What the devil is about to do to you. Amen. That's why you need to run to God. That's what David was saying in the Psalms. Amen. That's what David was saying in the Psalms. Because in God, God, listen to me. God wants you to prosper. Deuteronomy chapter, chapter, chapter 8 and verse 18. Amen. Verse 18 and 19. Let's read it. But thou shall remember the Lord thy God. Thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. For it is he that giveth thee the power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant which he swear unto your fathers. God wants you, amen, to, to know what it is to prosper. So when the devil is putting poverty on you, poverty on you, you've got to, amen, fight against it. Come up with ways. Begin to believe God for ways where you can come out, out of this poverty situation. Believe God. The doors will open. God will give you, amen, foresight and insight. I always tell people, if you can imagine it, you can create it. If you can imagine it, you can create it. If you can imagine it, you can make it happen. But and you can you can even do it better when God is in it. When God is in it, God will help you build it. God will help you to prosper in it. Amen. You gotta find God in this. Watch this next verse. Amen. Verse 19. 
And it shall be that if you will forget the Lord thy God and walk after other gods and serve them and worship them, I testify against you this day that you shall surely perish. And that's what's happening with a lot of lives because they are not seeking God. They are not putting God first. Their lives are, are messed up. Their lives are discomforted. Their lives, their lives are, are, are hindered. Their, their lives are being affected. They never tried to give you shortcuts. He tried to give you shortcuts. So he brings somebody into your life. Amen. Amen. Outside the will of God. And you begin to suffer. You're going to suffer. Amen. It feels good for a while, eh? But it's going it's to eventually turn sour. Amen. It's like a sugar-coated lemon. Amen. Under. Amen. Uh, oh, all that sugar. Amen. Amen. I, it, it, like, I, like the, I went and bought, bought a salad. Um, you know, Pastor Keith. Pastor Keith is a chef as well. I went and bought a salad. Pastor Keith, oh my goodness. They did this salad. Oh, six shrimp in the salad lettuce amen amen spinach amen oh just think about it tomatoes oh you should see the salad amen some small pieces of avocado in the salad and then amen with the with the let with the with the shrimp and with the with the two bo with the boiled egg cut in half and sit on that salad and then they gave you some vinaigrette dressing to dress in that salad. I know it's lunchtime, feel it. I want you to feel it, it's lunchtime. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Some vinaigrette dressing to dress in that salad. Amen. So I listen to me, I, I got down in that salad. I said, My God. This salad is tasting good as I spread the vinegar. And I kept mixing. And then all of a sudden, I made a big bite. Amen. And when I bite, oh my God. <laughs> they left a lemon, to, a piece of lemon, amen, to season the shrimp. And I didn't know. Amen. And I didn't know. It messed up my whole salad. Amen. Lunch. Amen. It messed up my whole salad lunch. I had to go wash out my mouth. By then, the feelings that I was getting, the vibes I was feeling, amen, got messed up with my salad. That's what the devil does to you. He gives you something that you can enjoy and then he sticks in something inside of there and will mess you up. Amen. Somebody said, get the hands, you devil. Get the hands, you devil. You, you got to game and you got to keep that devil out. You got to observe what you're doing. You got to recognize as much as nice as it is. Check it out. Check it out. Check it out. Somebody touch somebody next to you and say, check it out. You don't want the devil inside of that. You don't, you don't want the devil inside of that you gotta check it out let me get ready to close you see gener generational curses will, will will mess you up and curses in general will mess you up generational curses and curses in general will mess you up that's why I keep recommending in, in this series that I'm doing you need the Lord. You need, you need the Lord. You're strong in the Lord. Amen. And in the power of his might. You, you need the presence of the Lord. You, you, need, you need the presence. You know, one, one person, amen, I heard said, that you don't need no long song service. Amen. When you come to church. Listen to me. That person doesn't even know what they're talking about. Lack of experience. Yeah, amen. You you know just don't need a worship service when you come to church. You need a you need a worship service before you come into church, so that you can enter in His gates with thanksgiving in your hearts. Amen. You can enter in His gates with thanks. You can enter into His courts with praise. Amen. That person don't even know what they're talking about. You need the presence of the Lord. The Word of God tells us in the presence of the Lord there is fullness of joy, and at His right hands there are pleasures forevermore. My worship to God. God is not to get things from God. Amen. My worship to, to God is to let God know that I have need of him. I have need of him. I, I'm submitted to him. Amen. I'm submitted to him. Man, many of the friends that I grew up with, amen, they, they well, now they don't even ask me that question. John, you still in church? I become, amen, because I become so seasoned. I, amen. Remember now, I'm, I, amen, I'm a, I'm a grown man. I'm 60 years old. I'm a grown man. I ain't no boy anymore. 
Amen. I'm serving God over 40 something years. So, my friends, when they see me now, they say, hey, How are you doing? Look at Pastor coming, boy. Amen. But I remember a time they used to ask me, Amen, you still serving God? They haven't seen me for a while. You still go to church, John? And I would, I would just laugh. I said, Listen to me, there is nothing still about this. There is nothing still about this. When, when I was in sin, the devil messed me up. The devil, amen, affected my life. Since I've been serving Jesus, amen, I've, I've learned what it is to see God's grace on my life in the midst of every trial that I face. And I've had true, I have had faced trials. I've faced trials. i face faced destins. Oh, yes, you're going to face destins. You're going to face trials and even serving God. But you make a commitment to serve God. God will keep that which you have committed unto him against any day. God will keep you. You can, you can live this life, amen, and live it victoriously. Even though you get knocked down, you get back up and you still keep going because the devil must not have the final say in your life you stay with God you stay following the fear and the reverence of God why because I got news for you God capsules you spiritually in the midst of every witch God capsules you in the midst of every warlock God capsules you God capsules you in any house that you live in that may not have the fear of God. I hear people say, you know, the people in my house are saved. That's good. You can get them saved. And if you don't get them saved, amen, you, you can be kept. Amen. God knows how to keep you. God keeps you. Amen. Some of you have unsaved, amen, relatives. I, listen to me. I grew up in a house with, with lots of grandchildren. Amen. Amen. Lots of grandchildren. Hey, and, 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 and before I move across to my grandmother, I live alone with my father. My father and myself live alone. And there was a girl that I, that, I, that I liked so badly that anywhere she is, I wanted to awe ah when I was a teenager. Amen. I really liked this girl. Amen. And it's life had it that her mother put her out. Amen. I, I wasn't ready for that kind of responsibility as a teenager. And she came to my father, and my father took her in and put it, and the only space it had was in my room. And I, I'm now saved three months now. Three months now I'm saved. Oh, and listen to me. She is as hot as a pepper ball. <laughs> and I am now, amen, I am now blood washed. And she's now in my room. And each night she would come and she would push me to the corner of the bed. Get up, boy. And I would say, let me tell you the truth. I'm going to tell you because you young people here are going to face some of these stuff. Amen. And I'm, amen. I'm a young, hot-blooded young man. And I was jammed to the wall and pray. Amen. Tempted to touch. But I fear God. I want to serve God. Listen to me. There's nothing like a made up your mind. You got to make up your mind. Amen. You got to make up your mind to serve God. I made up my mind to serve God. I stood in that room for three months and I eventually got out of that room because, amen, one other day in that room would have put me in trouble. And I went across to my grandmother to stay. Amen. And I went across to my grandmother to stay in my, 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 my good lady said, said, told all my friends, he is like a stone. No matter, amen, if you push a needle in him, you won't get blood from him. I was a good testimony, amen, that amen, that she could have gone and said something else. But I made up my mind to serve God. Now I'm by my grandmother. I'm in the boys' room. We have a servant quarters. My grandparents were blessed by God in a beautiful house and made quarters on the outside, but we were so many. My grandmother raising all her grandchildren. We in the boys' room, the boys stayed in the quarters outside. And when I stayed in the quarters outside, my bigger cousins are bringing in all their girlfriends, troubling my night's sleep. I walk in the house and I told my granny, I said, Ma, I can't stay out there. She said, well, the only space you have is on, your on the couch. In this house, we'll spread something on the ground. 
And I lived on that ground there until I went out to college for about two years in that bed on the couch for two years. Amen. For two years, I stayed in that house inside the house with my granny and the girls on the inside of that house until I went, on to, went out to college. I lived on campus out at college. But you know what, what I always give God thanks for is that, amen, God preserved me in, the, in, in, in that situation. God preserved me in that situation. I'm, I'm saying this for, the, for young folks who are dealing with that kind of trouble in their lives. Amen. You, God can keep you. God can capsule you. Amen. God can capsule you in that life. Amen. My old girlfriends came home to look for me. When they came home to look for me through one gate, I'm heading through the next gate going to church. Amen. Because, amen, I made up my mind. And I, I, I bring you to this scripture and close because I want to help some of you dealing with sexual impurity this morning. Amen. The word of God says, present your bodies. Romans chapter 12 and verse 1. Present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Don't stop there. The next verse. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You have to be, be, be not conformed. You cannot conform. You see, many of us, many of you come to church and you're struggling. And I know that. And I'm going to run you. I'm not going to curse you. You know the worst persons? Some of you are so bound in different challenges that you face. And I'm, that's why I'm here for. That's why the church is here. We can, we can help you have better family lives. We can help you have, amen, better, better, amen, better, better days ahead of you. And you can raise up a generation that is not locked into darkness. You can raise up a generation, amen, that is not locked in. And listen to me, I want you to know I smoke weed. I bypass weed. I used to smoke so much weed, I've told you already, that, that we would put a whole drum in a room because we had bags of weed. But let's don't have no weed out there, man. The f folks I lined with had crocus bags of weed. We would cut a, a half drum and put the whole half bag of weed in that drum. And we sit down there smoking and passing a bubbler, amen, or use a chillum, uh, amen, we, amen, you smoke until it come through your eyes, amen, and we, um, then I, that wasn't enough for me, I move on to, to Corky, to, to MX tablets, and ICI, amen, I, amen, I, go, amen, I got, got high like, till I can't even find my way home. So I'm not talking about church boy here, but I'm talking about someone whom God saved and God can keep and God can deliver and God can set free. I want you to know that you can have victory. That's why, that's why I feel for many people who are struggling. Many people, amen, who, amen, who, who have, amen, have not been able to develop themselves in the career. I know what it is to be poor. I know what it is to have. Amen. I know I have my own business as a young man. Being a Christian, I learned what it is to have my own business. I've had two auto supplies businesses in Digo Martin. Everybody knows me. They know Chris Auto Supplies. But I've graduated from those things. Amen. And kept my witness in, in my community. I passed in my own home church that I grew up in. Amen. In Digo Martin. Everybody knows me. But the thing about it is that it's not that I've been perfect. It's not that I haven't had failure. I'm so glad that none of you know my failures. And I'm not going to tell you neither because you're molten good. <laughs> but I've had failures, major failures too. But I'm afraid all your moat. <laughs> so I'll tell you of my victories. But God, God kept me in spite of. Amen. God kept me. God changed me. In spite of, amen, God changed me in spite and he can do the same for you. Amen, I believe that you have been helped this morning to not let the devil reign in your parade. Let's stand for prayer, amen, let's stand for prayer. Amen. Oh, I want us to realize that we have the love of God. 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 You and I, we have the love of God. And God doesn't want to hurt you. That's why the Word of God says, 
for this purpose. First John 3, 8. I love it. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested. Yes. And if you are practicing sin, the devil is going to take control. For the devil sinned from the beginning. He's going to take control. Don't be of the devil. Don't be of the devil. This morning I fell on my, on my face before God when I think about preaching to you. I've been up since 3 o'clock this morning because I was, you know, studying and praying for you. Before you got here, I was, I was praying for you. I was just not only praying for you, but I was praying for myself because it's a long journey still to go. And there are a lot of things that the devil will continue to bring to us, to affect us. So I was praying for myself as well. If I was praying for you, I want you to know that this morning message will, will help you to know that you're not alone. You are not alone. And God wants you to have victory. God, God wants you to have victory. He, he doesn't want the devil to reign in your parade. He wants you to have victory. So that, so that I, if you feel in yourself don't be ashamed that pastor I really covet your prayers this morning in the house I want you to just join me on the altar so before I dedicate the babies I'm going to do some baby dedications right after but let's just spend about five minutes on the altar let's just believe God because it doesn't it doesn't take much for God to do a work in your life but he wants your response if you, if you want to come, please come. Uh, I would glad. Just ask the person next to you for an excuse. I don't wait for somebody else to move. You move because you know what you want. You know what you want. Just ask for an excuse. And ask the person to help. Amen. To help you. I want to come. I want to I wanna be wrapped up. I want to be wrapped up in his warm and tender love. I want to be. I want to have victory. I want to live with victory. Amen. I don't want to live with, with no demons always, amen, on my case, on my life, in my, in my zone. Amen. I don't want to, no devils in my zone. There is still room for you, please. If you only sense there is a need to help in the struggle that you face, I want you to just come and ask God to help you that you will not become a victim of the, the trouble.